Is that for real? From Studio B at KPRC Channel 2, Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on a Tuesday. I think it's the 29th. It is the 29th. I'm, I'm here spinning this wheel, and I, I have no idea what I'm You're doing. You're like a game show host. <laughs> Only worse. <laughs> What's that terrible game show that airs on Channel 2 at 3 o'clock? Houston Life? Oh, that's right. That's Not us. Not a game show. Not a game show. <laughs> You know, sometimes it takes a while to figure your identity out, right? I know. Hey, you look great. Go Astros. Thank you. You know, just repping, repping the blue and orange, the stars today. Game one, we're pulling for our guys, and we need to continue on this uh, playoff season. We do. We're sending all our good vibes to the team today. We're going to get to these fun drinks in just a moment, but first, let's chat about today's show, because we have some fun surprises coming up. I am so excited about this segment coming up. Today, we have the Texicana Mamas. This is a group of three Latina singers from San Antonio sharing their Mexican-American heritage through music. And if you don't know who they are, grab your phone, download their music right now because you're going to meet these three women phenomenal the history behind them but their music is so incredible too i'm telling you you're going to be instant fans you're going to be like fan major fans well and they were all pursuing i believe separate careers, separate careers. and now they have come together and officially named the band and released the new album so looking forward to meeting those ladies very much so also national coffee day folks why not kickstart your afternoon with some seasonal coffee cocktails how about that spiked pumpkin latte and chocolate espresso martinis oh wow well those will those will have us feeling good in no time at all i think we're gonna have a latte to choose from <laughs> A latte fun today. A latte of fun, right? Don't uh huh. You think? I do. These drinks look so pretty, and I'm I'm such a, a person that really loves a good fluffy drink vessel for your drink. Yes. And I love how all three of these drinks are different. And I want to say, is this? I don't know which direction. Is this the martini? I don't know. Okay, this is the chocolate espresso martini. Okay. Spiked pumpkin latte, and then a pumpkin latte here on the end. Well, and this is from the Toasted Yolk. I believe Lauren Kelly will be live from there later to sort of break it all down for us and right. see what they're serving up today on this National Coffee Day. Because a lot of people are doing different, you know, sales and deals and stuff um, that you can take advantage of. But um, we're going to sip these very slowly. Oh, we are? Speak I mean, for yourself. I'm you, just kidding. You can I can hear them. the phones ringing right now. I'm going to start with this one. You know, I'm I'm a pretty. Uh, I don't venture out. I have two ways I drink my coffee. Pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> and pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> Three ways. Okay. <laughs> so I drink, you know, just my regular coffee at home. I have a little splash of my cream, uh, which is usually like an almond milk or something. And and if I order something out, it's a flat white or just a coconut milk latte. I'm not a half-calf, double, triple, whatever. I, I, I don't know any of those. But those are the, t yeah, the, you had a little sugar. Sorry. A little whipped cream there. It happens. Mm -hmm. So the flat white, I mean, that's very Australian of you because a lot of people hadn't even heard of the flat white until a few years ago. Oh, this is nice. This is good. I love a good flat white. I think because of the, um, it's not so foamy, but I love a lot of cream in my coffee. Actually, I like just a little bit of coffee in my cream. Really? <laughs> no, I, I do put a lot of cream in there. I like it all, all coffee. Once in a while, I'll do a, a splash of maybe oat milk or almond milk. Yeah. But in general, I would order a quadruple espresso on the rocks. On the rocks, baby. On the rocks, uh -huh. just straight espresso. Because for me, all of the sugary stuff, you, I mean, you sit next to me. All so day long. You hear my your stomach puppies. growling all day long. <laughs> so if I'm drinking some sort of sugary something, you'll hear it all afternoon. Well, and for me, I'm not a, I'm not, I'd rather have a salt than a sweet. So that the extra stuff in the drink, it just, I would rather eat a burger instead of drinking a thousand or 2,500 calories in a coffee drink. Well, forget about those calories today. I know. Because we're just going to celebrate and drink up. What's so great is, you know, we talk about how we order our coffees, and some of y'all are very specific. I've been behind people in Starbucks and with their orders, and and if, you, if you're getting coffee for somebody and, you know, and forget you, about it and you mm -hmm. mess up their order, yeah. Oy, totally a problem. So we want to know, this is an article from the Gentleman's Journal, 
Um, it's a little bit older, but it's still still a good one. What does your coffee order say, say about, about you? you? That's very funny. It is good, right? So the flat white says nothing about you other than you're generally like coffee. That's it. Just like there's really nothing special here. You just you like coffee with cream, I guess. That's nothing really. Boy, this article information is very good. Oh, um, revolutionary findings. The black uh, Americano. It says for strong, no nonsense people favored by night shift journalists and hard boiled police detective. OK, so that's kind of interesting. That totally fits you. OK, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And then a latte means that you're a little more laid back than the average city commuter. Definitely not laid back. He would not describe me as laid back. I think that study needs a latte of work. OK, I have another it one. It was not that exciting. I but. have another one. And this one um, comes from, where is this? Who did it come from? I don't know. I'm going to find it. But it's really interesting. So if you drink black coffee, <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to say where it's I am from? so glad I have some coffee to keep <laughs> keep myself awake right now. Um, so this clinical psychologist recently conducted a survey of a thousand coffee drinkers. It was published somewhere. But this person <laughs> it's Are you punking me right now? You cannot be serious. Listen, if you drink black coffee, your personality traits are your old school. The light side, you keep things thim simple. The dark side is you can be quite moody. <laughs> I'm so confused. No, it's not good. Latte drinkers are comfort sinkers. They're generous with their time and can get overextended. This was, this was information found in a survey of 1,000 coffee drinkers. Frozen and blended drink coffee drinks, I know you all are out there because you're very specific about those things. So that is uh, the personality traits is you, you try lots of new things. You're socially bold and you're trendsetters. The light side, you're childlike, spontaneous, and imaginative. <laughs> Are you crying? No, I just stopped listening a while ago. <laughs> I mean, can't we just say it's National Coffee Day and leave it at that? I thought this was I'm really I'm so funny. lost. What no. about decaf people? Oh, well. Do you trust decaf people? Never. Never. No. I don't get it. Decaf is not actually like totally lacking caffeine though. There's a little bit of caffeine in decaf coffee. Isn't decaf coffee sort of like white chocolate? It's not real, right? Well, it's still coffee. What do you think it is? I don't know, but don't you drink coffee for the jolt? Well, yeah, it's still coffee. But don't, but... White chocolate is not actually chocolate. It's not at all. No, that's a segment for another day, though. <laughs> I have more information on that study coming tomorrow. Um, but decaf people, it says they like to be in control may be labeled selfish and obsessive. I think that's, those are three traits I would have never pinpointed on a decaf drinking coffee I've person. I've probably dated a few people who are decaf people then, without even realizing Without it. even realizing. Yeah. Interesting. Wow, well that was really fascinating. Wasn't that great? Yeah, I'm excited that Lauren Kelly will be doing some things also for this National Coffee Day yeah. as well. I stopped, so this will be my third, fourth, no, fourth, fifth and sixth of the day because this morning, you know, Brandon and I, we make cold brew at yes, home. Yes, yes. We learned how to do it right here on Houston Life. So good. From our friends over at Coffee Q. So we yeah. make a cold brew that steeps overnight and then in the morning, we usually have a couple glasses of the cold brew, which mm -hmm. is quite strong. And then this morning, I stopped at the grocery store and as long as I was there, I, was, I grabbed a little coffee in a can, right? Oh, the nastiest thing happened to me at the grocery store. What? It was... So I was in a hurry to get here uh, earlier today, right? So I stopped by the store to grab, and I figured I would grab lunch. Grab a coffee, grab some food. I was running around all morning, didn't have time to eat. Okay. So I saw that there was this, I don't know, kind of a, a lemon, pepper, tuna salad in the case. And okay. I thought, oh, that, that sounds pretty good. So I opened the door and reached into the case. And as I picked it up. No. What? Did it spill on you? All this tuna juice dumped down. It covered my hand. It dumped down my wrist. I think it even got a little bit. <clears throat> there may be a little, a little hint of an aroma, a little oh. fish aroma. So it dumped all over my hand. Oh. And normally I would have put my items down and maybe run to the bathroom, but I was in a rush, so I couldn't do that. And then by the time I got back to my car, you know, I, there's nothing in my car. 
there was a little thing of hand sanitizer. Right. I don't even have a napkin in my car. So I had this like tuna, I know. Did it you was, buy the leaky tuna? No, I didn't. I okay. put it back. Okay. No, no. I actually picked up a second one because I thought, oh, this one's leaky. I picked up a second one and even more leaked down. It was, it was a bad scenario. Oh, that does not. No wonder you didn't want lunch when I asked you. <laughs> yeah, I was, lunch. I was you had no appetite left. From this morning. Hey, can we talk about how beautiful it is outside right now? Y'all, this is what we've been waiting for. This is what we get through July and August for. Quite honestly. And, mm -hmm. you know, let's face it, September. Yeah. You know, this is beautiful. It is so beautiful. And this morning uh, on my run, I happened to run by Emancipation Park. And so I passed by the Say Their Names Memorial. <sighs> if you guys have a chance to get out there and see it, it is absolutely beautiful. And it's such a gorgeous day to just be outside. It's, you know, it was sparsely attended today. Um, it was just unveiled yesterday there. Right. But of course, 200, uh, approximately 200 um, black Americans who have lost their lives all the way back to MLK and you know George Floyd um, it, it just is nice to be able to see their see their photos and and learn a little bit about each person put a name to the face and a mm -hmm. story to the name and um, I would imagine that is sort of heart-stopping um, when you I haven't been there yet my plan is to take the boy the whole family should go but oh, I really good. want the boys to go too as sort of a, a learning experience they know what's going on they they are well aware of the headlines and what's happened in our world um, but I think to walk and let them at their own pace read it look into those eyes of those photographs and really take a moment I would imagine that when you get there when you're in that time you sort of don't hear anything else around you yeah did you get lost in that moment? yeah there's definitely a solemn feeling over there and I also appreciate the fact when people can have conversations and open a dialogue and the climate these days is just, we've talked about this on the show so many times, it's yeah. so toxic. People fire off these comments on social media, even when Channel 2 was covering this exact story. Reading some of the comments online, first of all, don't read the comments because It'll it just... will depress you about the future of the human race, that there are such awful people out there who create fake accounts to create fake racist comments. I mean, it's horrible, horrible what people say. And I think the way to sort of bridge that gap is to to have real dialogue you know it's it's too easy for people to anonymously fire off comments mm -hmm. and I think now more than ever I mean we're, we're these issues of race and inequality and things that we're dealing with in 2020 that a lot of people would have you know hoped had gone away right. um, the fact is that the deck is absolutely stacked against a certain group of people and and we need to have these conversations we need to have difficult conversations if we're gonna move forward so yeah stop by take the family and I think it's so cool that you and Orlando talk to the boys about things that you know a lot of times white people think oh well this this doesn't affect me but it does. It, it absolutely does. And yeah. just because it, you think it doesn't affect you doesn't mean it's not a problem. Absolutely. And I cannot wait. But what a beautiful day to go uh, to Emancipation Park and see that. And just, you know, the, not a cloud in the sky here. It's absolutely a perfect day. But um, and what a peaceful way to spend the morning, too. Just looking at those photos. Yeah, for sure. And, and just a reminder, too, that uh, Houston's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Very diverse it's a city. Pretty cool Very place cool to live. place. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And the weather, you know, from October through <laughs> through <January>. May. <laughs> oh man. It's a oh, place man. to be. You know, can I circle back just a hair sure. to the coffee? Oh. I know. But listen, we want the viewers, you guys, oh. to share what you drink. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna go off on like a tangent or anything, you know, my my very scientific reports. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, it was very interesting. I was just briefly lost. It's totally fine. <laughs> but we do. We do want to know what your coffee order is and maybe what it says about you. Absolutely. I think anything with whipped cream is very playful. Oh, of course. No sprinkles, though. This middle one's quite strong. Sprinkles in your coffee? Yeah, you know, little chocolate sprinkles or something. Oh, okay. I don't know. All right. Listen, okay. we need to get out to Lauren Kelly because she is taking National Coffee Day to the next level. Thank you for having these delivered to mm -hmm. us. You are doing the spike drinks, Lauren. <laughs> You're out in the woodlands. Cheers, friend. Cheers, guys. So I, I stood in front of the sign and I thought, could this not be more Houston Life? Everybody at Houston Life is always like, yes, more coffee, please. So we are here at the Toasted Yolk in the Woodlands, and they're going to teach us how to make three seasonally spiked coffee cocktails. Coming up next, I'll tell you what's in this. Mm -hmm. So with fall officially starting,
thing. I went to the back of my closet, I pulled out my long sleeve, I got my boots ready to go, and also all the pumpkin spice is happening right now. And I had to call my friends at the Toasted Yolk in the Woodlands to give us a little bit of a lesson for National Coffee Day, which is today, by the way. I'm here with General Manager. This is gonna be Lionel Villarreal. Yes, ma'am. And he is gonna be teaching us about some seasonal spiked yes, coffee cocktails. Yes, ma'am. First of all, Lionel, did you know that over 2.5 billion cups of coffee are drank worldwide throughout this entire day, every day. I did not know that, but I, I think we do about a million here. I'm pretty sure that <laughs> the Houston Life team takes over the other million, which rounds that out. Yes, so sir. first of all, I want to talk about the three drinks huh? that Derek and Courtney have on set today, and also yeah. that we're going to be showing viewers how to make. What are these? Okay, this is the chocolate espresso martini. This is our regular pumpkin latte and right here we have the spiked pumpkin latte so aside from the booze though what uh -huh. types of coffee goes into making these drinks uh right now we just uh espresso in all of these okay okay Straight and espresso. you're going to show us how to make these and by yes. the way we know a lot of moms a lot of women who <laughs> maybe can't have alcohol or maybe are a mom to be these can be made without the alcohol in them we're yes, just going to show you the spiked version because i'm here is that yes. right that's fine yes ma'am we definitely do <laughs> well, that. Let's start the chocolate martini because this looks delicious. It is. What all yes, goes into this one? So uh, it's got chocolate syrup around the edges and then we have a, a chocolate or a cocoa sugar mixture for the rim. Okay. And then we got uh, two ounces of our espresso. Now she's making it back there. And that's cold espresso. Okay. So cold versus hot espresso? Yes, ma'am. So it's a martini, so we wanted to serve it cold. Gotcha. Okay, yes, okay. Does that affect the, the pureness or the potentness of the coffee in it? It does not. No, ma'am. Not at all. Okay. So we're going to do... We're how, gonna do... how much espresso is in that to, you know, kind of keep me awake and kickstart my afternoon? Oh, uh, we got two ounces in Okay, there. okay. A good amount. Yes, ma'am. And ma so the booze, the liquor in here That's... is Tito's vodka. Yes, okay. ma'am. One and a half ounces of that. Okay. This is nice and simple so far. <laughs> really is. just a couple it of ingredients. You can make it at home. We got one ounce of uh, Irish cream here. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. That gives it that sweet flavor. Okay. And also the simple syrup, which is one ounce. Okay, awesome. And voila, you shake it up. Yeah, just kind of stir it, give it oh, a stir. Stir it up. I oh, forget, martinis are stirred, not shaken. And then you pour it on in. Let's get started on the next drink. What there do we, we have go. right there? This so, one right here is going to be a that's latte. That's just our pumpkin latte, yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, and that's no just alcohol. a flavored pumpkin latte. And yes, then what about the third one? That's the spiked pumpkin latte. Oh, well, let's do that one. Let's, let's do the spiked pumpkin latte. Oh, pumpkin definitely. Latte. All right, so and we're... you have to notice a little orange on top to make yeah, it give a little officially color. pumpkin, for oh, sure. Yes, ma'am. So we're going to start off with our two ounces of espresso. Okay. Our four pumps of spiced pumpkin uh, syrup. Okay. And our eight ounces of uh, milk, steamed milk. Okay. Does anybody ever come in and order a decaf coffee drink, Lionel? Of course, of course. We have those every now and then. I don't know how they do it in the morning, but they do. I know. And then we're going to add uh, two ounces of Tito's. Okay. So it's essentially two ounces of the espresso and two ounces of the liquor that you're yes, pouring in there as well. Okay. There we go. And then I bet I know what goes on top. A little bit of whipped cream. Okay. Whipped cream on top. Yes, that is what makes it. That like puts you in the fall and winter mood. And then we add the color for, for pumpkin. Oh, there we it's go. so beautiful. That's our well, now we can come over here and cheers. Yes. Yes, ma'am. This is so, you guys, this was so easy. And I mean, I'm going to try it. It will look in no way like this. But thank you so much for celebrating National Coffee Day with us. If you want any of the recipes for these three delicious drinks, I have put them online at HoustonLife.tv. Derek and Courtney. Cheers, guys. Happy National Coffee Day. Happy Cheers. Happy National Coffee Day. And, Lauren, they are delicious. So thanks again. Such a yummy treat. By the way, Houston Life will be right back with a look at what's coming up on the news at 4. Welcome back to Houston Life. We hope you're having as much fun as we are today. <laughs> Absolutely. And today is, of course, National Coffee Day. And we want to know how you all like to order your coffee drinks. And we're going to start with Tina, who posted online pumpkin spice latte with extra whipped cream and cinnamon. Oh, yeah, Tina, sign me up. Very nice. And Craig writes in a cold Topo Chico and large cold brew. Oh, wow, from Mercantile and Montrose. Oh, yes. Second home. Listen, I've heard about Mercantile. I have friends who go there. I need yeah. to stop and check it out. So great. Lizette says, hey, I like a little coffee with my creamer and sweet and low. <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. I love you guys sharing. And I was reading some of the other comments on there. People are talking about like just the kinds of beans that they get or 
the HEB coffee that they get. So there's all kinds of really great ideas People there. People are very specific sometimes I about know. their coffees. Well, cheers. cheers to that. All right. Now let's get a check of today's headlines and the weather with Keith, Christine, and Frank ahead of Channel 2 News at 4. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Howdy. Great to see you. Hey, whenever Keith brings me, brings me coffee, I'm like, oh, it's a good day. Is hey, have you, have you guys been outside today? Oh, yeah. All oh, morning. You talk about a good day. This is a Chamber of Commerce day for sure. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Wait, what happened? <laughs> Well, Frank, you, Frank, you delivered. I mean, you should know ahead You're of anyone else. You're like the most else. popular guy in town right now. It's oh, beautiful out there. Awesome. Yeah, hey, look at that sky. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Triangle energy camera, nothing but blue. Temperatures in the low 80s and upper 70s. We've got a nice north wind. That continues. A little gusty this afternoon, but that's normal. We'll see that die down as the sun sets. 81 in Conroe right now, 82 in Pearland. Tomball, you're at 79. There's only one fly in the ointment, and that's just because of all this sunshine. It's an ozone producer when those winds calm down. So for the Austin area, the Houston area, the Beaumont area, air quality warnings through Wednesday, and I expect probably through Thursday also. So if you have upper respiratory problems, be aware of that. The ozone is going to go up. There's the front that went through. The rest of the country is awfully quiet, which means we have a lot of clear air that's going to continue to come our way. This evening, 82 at 4, 81 at 5, 78, 75 by 7, and it looks like we're headed right back into sweater weather territory again overnight. I'll have the numbers for your neighborhood coming up. It's going to be a great evening. So we'll talk about how long this is all going to last. Ann and I continues on the tropics. Christine. All right, Frank, thank you. And also coming up today at 4 o'clock, we're going to look ahead to tonight's presidential debate. President Trump and Joe Biden taking the stage in Cleveland tonight at 8 o'clock. You can watch it right here on Channel 2. And our Chris Gutierrez is in Cleveland. He'll have a look at things as they prepare for tonight's event that starts this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Plus, Dolly Parton. Who doesn't love Dolly Parton? She's a beloved icon we know across the world and known for her kind acts as well. Now she's bringing her charity work to Houston. A look at what she's uh, partnering with, who she's partnering with, uh, several local organizations to help children in HISD. And two siblings from Western New York have reunited 60 years after they were separated by adoption. They've been searching for one another for decades now. And coming up at 4 o'clock today, we're going to hear from them about the reunion and just how special it was after 60 years apart, you guys. Can you imagine? Man, you talk wow. about some good times. Or... Yeah. 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 Glad wow. they found each other after all that Without time. My goodness, Indeed. what a search. All right, guys, we'll see you at 4. Thanks. After the break, we're going to meet the three Texican sister, Texan sisters celebrating their Latin heritage through music and stories. We're going to chat with the Texacana mamas next. Okay, that's a sneak peek of the music video for Cocina de Amor, Kitchen of Love by the Texacana Mamas. You know, after years of pursuing their passion for music on their own, three tans from San Antonio decided to join forces to celebrate a bilingual record that celebrates their Hispanic heritage. I'm going to guess that video was recorded during quarantine. I don't know. I guess right? we're about to find out. Joining us now are the Texacana Mamas, Tish Hinojosa, Stephanie Urbina Jones, and Patricia Vaughn. Welcome to Houston Life. It is so so great to see all three of you. Oh, all right, complete with props. <laughs> and tell us how, how you all got together, because this album, essentially, it's official now, the Texacana Mamas. But I understand before you made it official, you had performed at the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville. Yes, yes, it was my first trip to Nashville. I'm Patricia, and Stephanie, I knew, bringing from my hometown of San Antonio. She lived there. I go, girlfriend, do you have a singer songwriter I could be a, a part of? I'm coming to Nashville for the first time. And she managed to get the legendary Bluebird Cafe. And it was Hispanic Heritage Month. And uh, we needed one more Latina because they decided to make it a celebration of Latinas. And so I called up Tish and she said, I'm in. That is <laughs> so, so awesome. And, and the three of you have such unique but very similar stories as far as family and the love for music. What I think is so awesome is the style. You're keeping sort of the old school uh, Latino music that many of us grew up listening to, our grandparents played in their homes, but yet it's, it's sort of modernized and y'all look fabulous, by the way. <laughs> Gracias. Well, you know, we just, uh, we all come from different um, backgrounds, music styles. You know, Tish was a icon in country music and folk music that we grew up, you know, loving and appreciating. And then Patricia is like a rock and espanol, you know, 
she's an amazing rocker. And I make honky tonk mariachi, country music with mariachi. And so when we came together as, as sisters, as of Amigas de Corazon, we put together all of our culture and the influences that we love. And it all started with songs. And, you know, then it became, it, had, it took on a life of its own. It's really been magical and amazing to work with each other and to watch so much beauty come from our culture and from our hearts back to us. And ladies, we will have a special performance in just a bit, but even just seeing that tiny little clip at the top of uh, the segment just a moment ago, it seems like you're having a lot of fun doing this. Talk about the album. Is it is it this sort of lighthearted vibe that people can expect from it? I think the album, well, our album kind of, kind of came, it um, progressed over the last year and a half, two years that, that we started working together since our showcase at the Bluebird Cafe uh, in 2018 of, of Diciembre 16. And, uh, you know, we started playing some gigs together. Actually, that night we got our first Performing Arts Center gig, which was very cool. So I kind of, you know, that was when they, you know, said, hey, what's, you know, what are you going to call yourselves? And Stephanie said, the Texicana Mamas. So that name stuck. It took a little while, you know, not, not even very long, but we started getting together. We showcased at South by Southwest to, together and, you know, said, okay, well, we're going to eventually have to make an album. We have to do some music together. So we started getting together, writing songs and uh, kind of kind of piecing together how we could um, bring our recording together from Nashville, from Austin. And, um, you know, so eventually this is how it happened pretty quickly. Uh, it's so, so incredible. I mean, out. Tish, you've you've played. Uh, I mean, you're basically considered local music royalty in Austin, where you've lived. You've recorded, of course, as you mentioned, Austin City Limits, but also performed at the White House. Stephanie, you've sang with Willie Nelson. Uh, you're the first artist to bring mariachi to the stage at the Grand Old Opry. So cool. And Patricia, you singer, actress, filmmaker. I mean, talk about a triple threat. <laughs> you ladies are really onto it, and I think it's about time to have this platform today in 2020 to have three beautiful strong vibrant women showcasing this type of music Ooh, gracias. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you we, we <laughs> love each other we respect each other and we have so much fun together you know and i to what you asked before you know we just we really enjoy this experience together it came as a surprise and as patricia often says it feels like providence like our ancestors are smiling down on us oh, i'm sure absolutely they are. you know celebrating our tejana culture and and the songs we put together we hope people really take a listen because half of the album we wrote and the Kitchen of Love, you're right. It was, we invited our fan base and friends from eight or nine different countries to participate in quarantine Kitchen of Love, because that's where love starts. And being in this darkest time globally, you would never know that video was made in the darkest time. And so we really wanted to be inclusive and our music is that. Yeah, we love the smiles on your faces in this video. It looks like a lot of fun. I can't wait to watch the whole thing. So as Courtney mentioned, I mean, she was reading through some of your accomplishments. Stephanie, first artist to bring mariachi to the stage of the Grand Ole Opry. I mean, when, when you ladies set out to really make this official and become a group, were you, were you setting out to, to really break these barriers or was that just sort of, you know, a byproduct of your success? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think all, all three of us have, have made some significant um, imp impact, uh, but each in our own way. You know, I've done folk and country and Latino music for the last 30 years. And, uh, you know, Patricia's been out there forging her own way, and so is Stephanie. And, you know, I'm so proud to work with, with them both. Um, and, you know, we all bring something to the table, and, and uh, I, think, I think that's the energy which is, uh, you know, what we are. And we didn't plan it, but once we started working, we felt the energy. And we've written a whole, you know, bunch of songs together. And, and our songs kind of reflect our feelings about our culture, you know, familia, um, friends, uh, our country, and uh, the things that we want to pass on to, to next generations. 
And I mean, obviously the bond between the three of you is, is very evident. And I think this is something too to celebrate today that women can stand side by side, forge to the top and be a force to be reckoned with. I mean, it, it's really fantastic. Gracias. Thank you, gracias. Well, thank you. Thank you for inspiring us. Yes. Well, sit tight for just a moment because when we come back, a very special performance from the Texacana Mamas. Don't go away. Welcome back to Houston Life. Time now to hear a song that's a celebration of friendship performing Amigas de Corazón. Let's give it up for the Texacana Mamas. This song goes out to all of our girlfriends, Amigas de Corazón. <laughs> Texacana Mamas, there you have it. Ladies, nice work. <laughs> and I was just thinking about your families. They must love being surrounded by music. And speaking yeah. of families, you have family here in Houston, right? We did. Yeah, Tia Nilda, my cousins Candice, Audra, Heather, my prima Tisha, Rosa, too. My prima Rosa lives in, in uh, Houston. My, sister's, my sister Linda lives in spring and all her big brood of family. So. <laughs> Okay. Big shout out to you guys. Oh, that is so awesome. I'm going to say in that video where you guys were performing, I'm guessing a lot of good times happens around those tables and in that kitchen. <laughs> this is actually my kitchen okay. where uh, we wrote Cocina de Amor. We wrote Amigas del Corazón. Uh, so this is kind of the place where we gather. And, and growing up, I'm the youngest of 13 in my family. And our kitchen was always the place. And yeah. my mom was an incredible cook. And uh, so life evolved around our kitchen. And uh, still, now that we're all grown and my sisters, uh, you know, we're all in the San Antonio, Houston, you know, uh, Austin area. But um, cooking and coming together in the kitchen is always the place. It's, 
everybody in Texas probably knows, like right. we just <laughs> hang out in the kitchen. It is so <laughs> true. And wow, youngest of 13, I can imagine those family gatherings were probably not so <laughs> quiet or boring. <laughs> um, hey, oh ladies, God is loud. <laughs> before we let you go, I know that right now, as you are reaching so many people with your music, you're also encouraging people and reminding people to get out to vote. I think that right now it's it's critical. We are our Latino community and our Latino, um, the you know I've just been you know watching the news and being in you know I've always been aware of and involved in you know what's happening with voting and the importance of it. My parents were you know I'm a first generation, so when my parents got the chance to vote, um, I'll never forget. And that's why I consider voting so, so, so important uh, because they ingrained that in me. Um, and, uh, you know, this this year is so critical and Latinos are supposed to be making the biggest impact mm -hmm. um, on voting. Uh, right. So it's so important, you know, to get messages out to our family, our friends, neighbors. Yep, and that, that deadline to register to vote is only a week away now. So if you have our, not registered... Our, new, our young sure. people, our Latinx, are going to make a huge difference. So true. Rock your heart, use your voice, and vote. Vote, vote. Please. All right. Yeah, let's get, let's get this world in order. Tiss, in good order. Stephanie and Patricia, we got to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time and for sharing your talents with us. We'll see you Adios. soon. Adios. Thank you. Adios. Adios. Thank you so much. Yeah. And don't forget, the Texacana Mamas debut album is available now on all streaming platforms. Download it. You will not be disappointed. It's fantastic. And this Voices of Houston segment was made possible by our sponsors, Burlington and River Oaks Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Did you know colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer diagnosed in both men and women every year? Here with more on the importance of screenings is Dr. Jeffrey L. Van Epps with UT Physicians. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Derek. Hi, Courtney. Thank you for having me. Of course, this is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and we're discussing this, of course, uh, on the heels of such a, a pa the passing of Chadwick Boseman. He was only 43 years old. When we put that age with what he battled um, at such a young age, it's, it, I think it's alarming for a lot of people, and, and this is the message that you all want to get out, is that this can, you need to get screened for this. That's exactly right. Um, you know, uh, like you mentioned, colorectal cancer is the is the third leading cause of uh, or diagnosed cancer in both men and women, but it's also the third leading cause of cancer death. And so roughly 5% of our population or one in 20 people walking around will be affected by this diagnosis sometime in their life, which is a, a staggering number. Um, and, you know, the, the value of screening um, is that, you know, colorectal cancer uh, at an early stage is not only highly treatable, it's actually preventable. So two thirds of our cases of colorectal cancer could be prevented by adequate screening and surveillance regimens. But unfortunately, a third of our population is not up to date with their uh, those regimens. And that has led to this rise in colorectal cancer in young people and collectively has led the American Cancer Society to decrease their recommended screening age from, from 50 to 45, and that's just for average risk uh, patients. But if you have family members who have had colorectal cancer at an early age or polyps, you may need to be screened even earlier. It must be frustrating, Dr. Van Epps, for you, knowing that this is preventable, it's treatable, if the screenings are done and it's caught early, it literally can save someone's life. So why are people not getting screened? Is it because it's the part of the body that a lot of people are embarrassed even you know, mentioning to their doctor? Yes, uh, Derek, that's definitely part of it. Um, the, it's, it's not always the most comfortable thing to talk about. Uh, some patients and some physicians honestly chalk up every uh, anal rectal condition or pathology to hemorrhoids. But uh, the fact is not all bleeding is benign. Uh, much of it can be, um, but it's, you need to be in tune with your body. And if these changes develop, changes in bowel habits, bleeding from your bottom, um, it's important not to sweep those uh, under the rug or be too embarrassed to get yourself evaluated by a doctor.
Absolutely, and, and I think you have to go back to the point that you were talking about. If caught early, colorectal cancer is extremely preventable, it's treatable, but you have to pay attention to the symptoms that are going on. Pay attention to your bowel movements and um, and notice, you're gonna know when you're not feeling well, and I think if people pay attention to those gut feelings, no pun intended, right? Gut feeling, but it, it, really paying attention to those symptoms and getting in touch with your doctor can really save your life. That's exactly right. Um, you know, there, there can be some more extreme symptoms of abdominal pain or new onset of weight loss without trying. But the fact is that most patients uh, experience more subtle symptoms. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's very, very important to not let uh, these changes uh, go unrecognized or uh, unevaluated. And I think it's important to underscore that that list of symptoms we just had on the screen, doctor, that doesn't always indicate that someone may have cancer, um, but, but it's a great reason if you are experiencing those symptoms to call your doctor to get checked just in case. Let's talk about, uh, Dr. Van Epps, just treatment options for colon cancer. And, and I understand that this is really tailored for every patient depending on the severity or stage of that cancer, if it is diagnosed. That's right. Um, we do tailor our treatment regimens to each individual patient. Um, that usually is dictated by the stage of their cancer, uh, whether the cancer is, is original or whether it's a recurrence, um, and to, to the overall health of the patient as well. Um, the, the three common tenets of, of colorectal uh, treatment are surgery, that's where I come in, um, chemotherapy, and radiation, which is less commonly used for, for colon cancer, but more commonly used for rectal cancer. And there are some exciting new therapies that are, are coming down the pike um, that I imagine we'll see in the next uh, five to 10 years. But for now, um, that's the primary way that we treat colorectal cancer. And doctor, I know that you mentioned this at the top of the interview, but if we can talk about um, the ages again, when we should be screened, and this is men and women, when, are, when we should be screened. Yes, thank you, Courtney. Um, so that has changed. Uh, it is no longer 50 years old for the average risk patient. It is now age 45 uh, that you should get your initial screening colonoscopy. Um, if you have a first-degree relative that has had colorectal cancer at an early age or a family history of polyps even, then you very likely will need to be screened even earlier. And there are some more rare genetic syndromes that you need to begin screening at an even earlier age, but um, those are more rare. But So the, the point that everyone at home should, should take into account is if you're age 45 and you haven't had a colonoscopy, please get one. And again, if you're feeling embarrassed or uncomfortable, do not worry. You're not alone. And you, doctor, you see this every single day. We got to, uh, we've got to leave it there. But thank you so much for your time in raising our awareness. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. And if you would like more information or to schedule a consultation, you can visit utphysicians.com or you can call 888-488-3627. And we'll be right back with more Houston Life. Tomorrow on Houston Life, we're learning more about the TV series Fifth Ward. The show is set in the historic Houston neighborhood, and we're going to chat with one of the actors and the creator of the drama series about filming around town and, of course, highlighting our city's diversity through the characters on the show. Fantastic. Also, tomorrow is Wine Club Wednesday. We are talking all things patio pounders. Uh oh. It's our favorite topic. A perfect selection of wines to enjoy outdoors. Each wine, by the way, is under 20 bucks. We're gonna have a special promo code to get the wines at 20% off. It's fantastic. And also, before we go, we wanna mention that uh, I'm involved in an event coming up on Thursday, and Home is Where the Heart Is. This is a virtual gala for Homemade Hope, um, and it's happening on Thursday, October 1st at 8 p.m. Tickets are available, and it's a really great local organization 
focusing on nurturing and empowering at-risk Houston children, teaching them how to cook nutritious foods and developing their life skills and um, also sustainability in their lives as well. So check out their website, plus a special appearance by Dirk Bentley. Oh, you're kidding. Uh -uh, That's kidding. pretty cool. And a cooking demo from Lucille's. We have Chef Chris there, and I'm walking you through the virtual gala. So if you can, join us on uh, Thursday, October 1st. Well, that's fantastic. And so many of these charities have found new ways yes. to continue their great work virtually. So I'm glad you're doing that. Thank you.